In this particular lecture, let's write the logic to calculate the total number of completed and incompleted to do items. So the way in which we are going to calculate that is if we actually take a look at the array here, which is the to do's array, the to do's array is going to look something like this, wherein we have uh, different objects uh, with their done set to true and false. So that means if I want to now calculate the items which are completed, which is the number of items which are currently done, then in that particular case, I need to loop through this given list. And after looping through this list, I need to search what items are done, and then kind of calculate the number of items which are done. So in order to calculate the total number of done items, what you could simply do is you could simply go to the to do's component or to do component, which you have up over here. And this already has this to do's array. And in order to calculate the completed items, I could simply say, all right, go through every single to do. So we'll make use of to do's dot map. Uh, but in this case, instead of using map, let's say we only want to get all the to do's which are completed. So I would say to do's dot filter instead. So what this filter does is that it will filter out the to do items depending upon a specific condition. And just as we use map, we could use the filter in a same fashion. So over here, I could say access every single to do. And I want to return only those to do's where the done of those particular to do's is set to true. So I would say return the to do dot done. So this will only return those to do's whose done is set to true. So now this entire thing gives us back a new array in which all the to do items are the only items which are done. So for example, if we only have one item which is marked as done, uh, this is going to return an array with only one object. Now once we have that array, we simply have to calculate the number of items inside that particular array. So I could simply say dot length. And this will actually give us access to the total number of items which are completed. So over here, let's save this count into some variable. So I could say const completed to do's equals this. So here we have it. We now have access to the number of to do items which are completed. So let's display that up over here somewhere. So for now, let's add an h1 here. And let's display the completed to do's which kind of gives us the number here. Alright, so let's go back here hit refresh right now it says zero because no items are completed. So let's first add items like lunch, dinner, breakfast. And now let's see what happens when I click on lunch. So as soon as I do that, as you can see, the value over here updates and it says that the number of completed items are one. If I click on dinner, now two items are completed, three items are completed. If I uncheck one of them, the count is going to reduce as well. That means this is now working. Now instead of displaying the count value here after the components, let's actually create a footer for our website and display the total number of completed items at the very bottom. So in order to display that, I'll create a new component. Let's name that component as footer.jsx, export default function footer. And now over here, I'll make this thing return a div. And inside this div, I simply have to pass in the total number of items which are completed. So in order to display that, I have to first make use of that component up over here inside the to do. So in the to do.jsx, instead of this h1, I'll now make use of the footer component. So let's say footer, close this. And now to this footer, I'll take this completed to do's and simply pass it up over here. So completed to do's is going to be let's say completed to do's. Now let's go to the footer, accept those completed to do's as prop. So completed to do's. And over here, I could simply go ahead and display those completed to do's. So let's display them inside a span tag rather than just displaying them inside a div. So I'll add a span tag. And over here, I would say completed to do's is going to be nothing but completed to do's. So completed to do's and that's it. So if I go back here, as you can see, it says completed to do's over here. Now let's style this thing up as well because this does not look good. So in order to style this thing up, I'll create a brand new CSS module called as footer.module.css. 
And over here, let's add some properties here. So I'll be creating two classes here. One is going to be the footer class, which is going to apply for this div and will also create a class for this span as well. So over here, I'll first style up the footer. So I'll say that the position of this footer is a uh, for now, let's say it is fixed. And then let's set the bottom to zero, which means I don't want any kind of margin here. Let's set the font size of this one to a little bit bigger, like 1.5 EMS. Let's set the font weight to bold. Let's align the text to center. Let's set the width of this thing to 100%. Let's set the background color to the regular yellow color, which we are using, which is F7 CA18. Let me set the padding on this one as 10 pixels from all the sides. And that's it. Now, once this class is done, uh, let's import those stylings here. So here I would say, all right, I need to import style or styles from dot slash footer dot module dot CSS. All right. Now let me use that up over here. So I would say the class name for this div is going to be styles dot footer. If I save this, go back here, this is what the footer looks like. So if I just uncheck this, it's going to display those completed items here. All right, so after this, let's also create a class for this span as well. So let's go back here and let's define another class like item. And for this one, I'm going to simply add a margin of 50 pixels from all the sides. And this is what it's going to look like. Now, along with the completed to do's, let's also go ahead and let's display the total number of to do's which we have up over here as well. So for example, right now we have three to do items in our list. So in order to display that, I could go back here inside the main to do component. And in order to count the total number of to do's counting that is quite simple. The only thing which you need to do is you need to go ahead, create a variable called as total to do's. This is going to be just to do's dot length. And that's it. So now let's pass this total to do's to this footer component as well. So total to do's is going to be total to do's. And now if I go back to the footer here, I could simply go ahead and make use of this span tag copy this, paste it up over here. And I could say total to do's is going to be total to do's. But then again, I have to accept the total to do's over here as props. So total to do's. And over here, let's simply replace this with total to do's. And that's it. If I go back now, it will display total to do's over here as well. Now there's no space in between these two items because we have this particular styling, but we have not yet applied to this span. So let's do that. So class name is going to be styles dot item. And let's make use of the same class name for the next span as well. So I'll add that up over here. If I go back now, it will have some space over here for these two things. So as you can see, this is what our app looks like. And now it also has space in between these two items as well. So if I add another item like football and click on add this time, as you can see, that is added up over here as well as total to do's count increased. And if I click on lunch, the completed to do count is going to go up. And if I delete this, the total to do's as well as this count decreases as well. Now, as you can see, our to do app is almost ready, but there's one simple functionality which we are yet to add. And that functionality is to go ahead and sort the items over here. So right now you'll notice that if I add another item like dinner here, what happens here is that if I check some item here, that items order still remains the same. But we want to have a functionality wherein if I check a particular item or where I mark that item as complete, that item should move to the bottom of the list and all the uncompleted items should appear at the top on that particular list. So let's learn how to perform that sorting functionality in the next lecture. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.